lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim from L'Oreal TV and L'Oreal Radio, with, here with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, uh, one of the believers asked the question, who or what are the two sticks in Ezekiel 37? Many people have concocted all kinds of strange interpretations of this passage, most notably the Mormon cult, whose interpretation is completely ridiculous and extraneous to any meaning found in the text itself or in the context of Ezekiel's book. Cult groups have toyed with this. Hyper-Messianic extremists have ascribed strange and unscriptural meanings to these two sticks. Other people have merely speculated. Let's see if by God's grace we can look at the text in context. In 720 BC, the 10 northern tribes were taken into the Assyrian captivity after the warnings of Hosea and Amos were rejected. Before that happened, however, some of the faithful people during the revivals in Judah in the south of King Asa came south, beginning with the abominations of Jeroboam II. They were faithful people who came south to Judah from the northern tribes. So a faithful element of the northern tribe already existed in the south before the Assyrian captivity of 720. In 585 BC, however, we have the Babylonian captivity, and it's against this background that Ezekiel is writing. Now Judah, the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and these other refugees from the north and their descendants are taken into Babylon after Babylon conquers Assyria. The text tells us that the two sticks will become one in his hand once again. There are three aspects of this prophecy. Each are important. The first aspect is the restoration from Babylon. The faithful remnant of Judah, from the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, and the faithful remnant of people who came as refugees from the 10 northern tribes, go into the Babylonian captivity due to their sin and irrepentance. But as God predicts, after 70 years thereabout, they return. But when they come back, those Jews who lived in what had been the Assyrian Empire, then incorporated into the Babylonian conquest, came back with them. We see this in the genealogies of Ezra in 2 Chronicles. So Jews who repented and believed from the 10 northern tribes, who were taken into the captivity of Assyria, returned from the exile with the Jews from Judah in the Babylonian captivity. They came back and became one. It is for that reason that at that point, Jews or Hebrews from all tribes began to be called Jews from the tribe of Judah. For instance, in the book of Esther, we know that Esther and Mordechai were Benjamites. They were not from the tribe of Judah. But the text shows us that people from all the tribes became known as Jews. This was a literal fulfillment of Ezekiel's prophecy. The faithful people of the northern tribes and those who repented while they were in the Assyrian diaspora, who were taken into the Babylonian conquest, came back with the tribes of Judah and Benjamin in the restoration in the days of Nehemiah, Ezra, Haggai, and so forth, and Zechariah. The two sticks became one, literal fulfillment.
Second aspect, even in the days of Judah, in the days of Jesus in the second temple period, Galilee was controlled by a Herodian, while Judea, what had been the area of the tribe of Judah around Jerusalem, was controlled by a Roman proconsul, Pilate. They were, as it were, two different, separately governed places. With the rebirth of the modern state of Israel, they were fused together again. Even in the Hasmonean period, before Jesus, King John Horacanus attempted to reunite Samaria, the north, with Judah in the south. But with the modern state of Israel, you have one state once again. This is the second meaning. The final meaning is this. Ephraim and Joseph are synonymous. We've explained many times, we have two pictures of the Messiah. Messiah, son of Joseph, the suffering servant, and Messiah, son of David from the tribe of Judah. It is showing that ultimately with the return of Christ, the Jews as an ethnic nation will recognize his messiahship in unity. Both the ones who have accepted him in his first coming and the ones who accept him in his second, when they look upon him who they have pierced. When the messiah would come, the Jews who believed in him would be one people. Those are the three meanings of this prophecy. All of them are valid, all of them are important. I would caution people to beware of the fanciful inventions of Mormonism and of British Israelism and of certain cultic groups <coughs> who ascribe all kinds of other meanings extraneous to the text. You had a primary historical fulfillment with the restoration from Babylon, where the 10 northern tribes had people come back to Israel with the two southern tribes in a unity. You also have the national rebirth of Israel, not as two nations, but as one. But there is a future fulfillment of this prophecy. Messiah, son of Joseph, corresponding to Ephraim, and Messiah, son of David, corresponding to Judah. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless.